Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today, we have an absolutely gorgeous Les Paul. This is what is known as the Les Paul Elegant, and this one is from the very first production year, 1997. Now, I did do a video on the Alloy series of Elegants a few days ago, so we learned a little bit about them then, but I'm going to go ahead and recover this subject. The Les Paul Elegant was one of the very first attempts at chambering a Les Paul out. Now the chambering on these guys is different from any type of future chambering because all the chambers are connected. So if you were to drop something through here, it would go all the way down and over eventually. So that makes this a perfect smuggler's guitar. You can keep your secret stash of whatever you don't want somebody finding inside your guitar. So being one of the first chambered Les Pauls is the claim to fame for these guys. But what else? They are just absolutely beautiful. They use the choicest woods on these guys. And they got ebony fretboards and no boring mother of pearl stuff. This is abalone inlay. You either love abalone or you hate it. Uh, personally, I go either way. Sometimes I think it looks good. Sometimes I think it looks a little over the top. I think on the Elegant, it is definitely in place though, because these are such beautiful guitars. Now these guitars were produced from 1997 through 2004. However, the first two years, 97 and 98, they have this. It is a custom shop inlay on the face of the headstock. Now this is another one of those you either love it or you hate it things. However, collectors generally prefer the first and second year of production simply because they're different. This gives them a more fancy aesthetic to them. After 98, they just switched to a regular Les Paul model silk screen. So that's kind of why these first two years will see a slight premium in price, simply because these things are already fancy looking, so why not make the headstock extra special as well? So to recap here, the specs of these guitars are two-piece maple tops with mahogany backs, mahogany necks, with ebony fretboards. So these elegants kind of remind me of the Les Paul Heritage 80 Elite series. They're one of the few Les Paul standards, in my mind anyways, that came stock with ebony boards. So with a name like Elegant, you usually find some very exotic finishes on these with amazing tops. You can find quilt tops, you can find flame tops like this one. I think my favorite finish on the Elegant series is probably the peacock finish. It's kind of a bluish green hue, but I've seen purple ones. I've seen like a crimson burst one. There really are quite a few different variations on the Les Paul Elegant, so I hope you enjoy the ones that I'm putting on the screen here. There's definitely a finish for everyone. So in the world of beautiful Elegant Les Pauls, some people don't like them because of the whole chambering thing, but to be honest with you, this guitar does not feel light. It weighs around 8 pounds 7 ounces, but for some reason it feels just like a 9 or 10 pound Les Paul. Now stock, these guys come with 57 classic humbuckers. And here's where I think they went wrong on the Elegant series. They did a Nashville styled bridge instead of the ABR1. I think if these came stock with ABR1s, I bet the Elegant would be an even more popular model. So what makes this one special? Well, obviously we have this beautiful flame top on it. That's not uncommon to see on an Elegant, but I think this top is just fantastic. It's over the top beautiful. It kind of reminds me of the Appetite for Destruction Les Paul. You would need a slightly different tint to the finish to be quite in that territory. But this is what sold me on this guitar. The back has some quilting action to it. And the wood grain just kind of looks like a bear <laughs> scratching this guitar. This is definitely a very exotic back to it. It's got a lot of figuring and dancing and movement to it. And that's what made me fall in love with this particular example. Now it's not as easy to see, but there is actually some flame in this mahogany neck in this area. That's definitely a special treat. So as you can see, very choice woods were used on this particular Les Paul Elegant. 
And something that's even really cool is if you take these pickups out and look in the pickup routes, even the mahogany wood underneath there has some dancing to it. So everywhere on this guitar is pretty much decked out with beautiful figuring to the wood. And this really is a fantastic looking example. Now this one does have some players modifications and wear, and we'll go over those real quick right here. First off, the big one. This one was rewired with 500k pots and brand new caps. A lot of people view that 500k pot upgrade. It helps open up the sound. I wish I could do an AB comparison. However, that was done, but you still do have your original 57 classic pickups. So that's what matters the most for these. Now it's kind of hard to tell, but I believe one of these pickup rings was broken and replaced simply because if you look at it, this one is more of a bone color, which I think is the original one. And this one has a very slight pink hue to it. It's very slight. I didn't even notice it until starting to film this, but it is there. Another modification is the strat buttons have been changed to kind of like a strat styled one. They have a little bit more of a curved top to them. And another small modification here is the addition of these thumb bleeders. They're there strictly for aesthetic purposes. You can remove them. It's just to give this guitar a 59 vibe. And the final replace part on this guitar is the nut. So overall, a Les Paul Elegant. I think these are incredibly beautiful guitars and they play and feel really nice. Now they're not for everyone simply because they are just such fancy looking guitars that can intimidate some people. But what I like about this example is somebody took it, they modified it a little bit tastefully, and it's got players wear, so you don't have to be scared to play this one. You can just have an absolutely beautiful Les Paul. So yes, I would suggest checking out a Les Paul Elegant. Now that we know a little bit about this guitar, let's go ahead and hear how it sounds.
that we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and look at its condition. Now, as I stated previously, this was a player's guitar, so we have a lot of wear and tear to go over here, but for the most part, it's in pretty good shape. On the face of the headstock, there is a very small chip in the clear coat right here. It's not too incredibly noticeable, but it is there. You have your typical lacquer shrinking lines around the custom shop emblem. I'm actually happy to see those because that's how you know it's a real Gibson, unfortunately. But besides that, you just have some general light string change scratches on this guitar. Your truss rod works just fine and has plenty of adjustment room. Again, the nut was replaced. You do have a few cosmetic blemishes around where they took the original nut off. That's pretty common to see, but you have no splintering of the wood or anything. Again, you have a beautiful ebony fretboard on this. This is one of the darkest I've seen. Pair it with these beautiful abalone inlays. It really is something special. Now the frets do show a little bit of wear. However, nothing you're really gonna have to worry about for a while. The face of the guitar is in pretty good shape. There's just a few small blemishes to go over. You mainly just have some picking scratches and light nicks and dings from playing the guitar. Something dinged against the top. But for the most part, I would say this thing's fairly clean. The biggest blemish on the front is right where a pick guard would be. There's a little dent in the finish right here that went through the clear coat. Back at the headstock, our serial number is 791026, which makes it a 1997 model. There is a little bit of a ding right there on the serial number. It's there, it's good to know about, but really doesn't affect the guitar in the slightest. You still have your original Grover tuners, and there is a very minor ding right here as well. But thankfully, no breaks, cracks, or repairs to the neck at all. So you're in good shape there. Now you're seeing these areas right here, you're probably thinking, okay, so the clear coat's been worn off. That's what I thought too before I got the guitar, but you'll see that in a few areas along this neck. I asked the owner about that, and he said, yeah, I was polishing my guitar one day, and then that just appeared and he was never able to get it off. Now what it appears to be, to me anyways, is bubbling of the lacquer underneath because the feel is the same. It just apparently bubbled or didn't stick. I'm not sure what that really is. It's kind of mind boggling, but thankfully it's not brittle or anything. You can press on it. You're not gonna crack the finish. It's just there. So it's kind of some light play wear to this guitar. But again, you do have some light flame action in this neck, which is kind of uncommon for mahogany. The back of the guitar does have some buckle worming and buckle rash, but for the most part, it's in pretty good shape. I would say the worst is right here, definitely. You've got a chip through the clear coat and a smaller one right there, but lots of light nicks and dings on the back. You don't have to be scared to play this one. And honestly, since it's been rewired, if you want to try some different pickups in it, you don't necessarily have to be scared of doing that either. And beautiful wood grain on the back of this. It's kind of slightly quilted and just this whole bear claw design. I love it. Sides of the guitar, these ones do have the wide binding in the cutaway. So that's something else that differs these from like a historic reissue. Once again, beautiful mahogany on this. They use some very choice stuff. You've got some nicks and dings along the whole guitar. And it really gives this guitar a slightly played in vibe. You're not scared to take this one out. Now we'll do a black light test. Everything's glowing the way I would expect to see on the face of the guitar. You have no touch ups or anything like that. Face of the headstock, similar story on this. Again, you just kind of have that small little ding right there but everything else is glowing the way I would expect to see. Back of the guitar, you can see this is stand rash. This must have been on a non-nitro safe stand. You can't really see it in normal lighting situations, but you can under black light. And you've just got those small nicks and dings once again. Back of the headstock, everything is looking good. No breaks, cracks, or repairs along this one. And here we'll take a look at those bubbling areas. You can see it glows a little bit differently, but that's not like the type of different glow where it'd be a touch-up. I, mean, I really do think that is just a light bubble under the lacquer or something. You don't have any finish wear off the neck, 
but you do have those small areas. The side of the guitar, once again glowing the way I would expect to see. No finished touch-ups on this one. So it definitely does pass the black light test. This guitar does come in an era correct Gibson USA case. It came to me in a non-original one, but I just happened to have a Les Paul Elegant slash Supreme case. So this one you've got one, two, three, four, and a fifth back latch, as well as the sixth one being a locking combo lock that has not been set. On top of that, you have a beautiful handle that pretty much won't ever break on you. That's a really sturdy construction for a handle. I actually did a completely separate review for this case because this has to be one of my favorite cases. I almost think it trumps the chainsaw case, believe it or not. The only thing wrong with this case is it took a beating at one point in time and you can see the wood kind of got pressed in, but it's still structurally stable. You don't have to worry about it, but it's good to know it's there. The interior is this beautiful crushed velvet and it's black and it really looks good with this guitar. It's got lots of plush padding along the edges. It's very similar to a modern day custom shop case. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Les Paul Elegant, sorry this one's already sold, but you can contact me on my Facebook page or check out the links in the description to see the old listing. Thank you Travel Dice for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care!